Hey everybody, welcome back to another video here on my channel. And it's time now for week 5 of NFL Picks. And now, I have not really been keeping track of like the games that I've been you know, going through and stuff like from week 1 and 2 and 3 and all that stuff. I haven't really been doing my overall record that much. The reason is just I haven't really been keeping track. But it doesn't really matter. I just um did... I did okay, I think, for the last week. I know I got a few games right, but some there were some games that were probably disappointing to some people, and some were shocking, I'm oh. sure. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, but we'll get over there, them in a second. But um, I do have a guest with me, and he, is, um, he joined me in the other NFL video before. I believe it was week number three that we did, I think. Think yeah, I think it was week three. Yep, week three. Yeah, and he uh, just celebrated a birthday recently, just yesterday. He is Mr. Alex Putnam, a puzzle ninety. Alexander the Great, whatever the hell you want to call me, YouTube was good. A <laughs> puzzle ninety, back here with another video. I'm Steve K. Going to talk about week number five, Mambo number five God. of NFL weeks predictions and pickums and all that good stuff. So let's get right into it. Indeed, we shall get into this, but let's go over our bye weeks first. People that are fans of the Dub Bears and the Buccaneers, you will have to wait till next week because they are on bye week. But, um, oh. yep. But, however, um, speaking of those two teams, the Chicago Bears destroyed the Tampa oh. Bay Buccaneers 48 to 10. I think it dismantled is more of the question. Yeah, well, apparently the Fitz, the Fitz magic is over, <laughs> and it's pretty much been over since they lost to the Steelers on that Monday night football game, I believe. But still, that that was um, crazy, man. I didn't expect it to be that high scoring of a game, but congrats to them. And All right, so let's get this. Yeah, that, was a, that was a crazy game. I know. Mitchell Trubisky, the Bears quarterback, threw six touchdown passes. Yeah, whoever has him on their fantasy squad, I'm sure they're happy about that. But not to not on my squad, he isn't. <laughs> but all right, so uh, here we go. Let's get into our first game, and that is Thursday night football between the Indianapolis Colts and the New England Patriots. But um, however, this isn't like how back in the day how people would always remember the Peyton Manning and Tom Brady matchup. This time it's Andrew Luck and Tom Brady. But um. The luck has not been on the Colts' side. I mean, not to not being offensive or anything, but it, it's <laughs> but it's kind of true. I mean, because but they only have one win, and the Patriots only with two wins and two losses, which is kind of surprising to some people. But to me, they're due to have a bad season. But Tom Brady is still playing like he's twenty some years old a little bit, and he's has been getting banged up a little bit, but. Um, they came, They lost to the Jaguars and the Lions, I believe, and now they're looking to win this game on Thursday Night Football against the Colts, and I believe they are going to get the win because I have the Patriots over the Colts. I don't think – actually, take that back. I think it's going to be pretty high scoring, though. I think the Patriots are just going to absolutely win this, 33-16. to 16. Um, Yeah, this is going to be a freaking blowout. I think um, Colts are banged up in the secondary, and Tom Brady playing in his prime in prime time will show that he's still absolutely one of the best. Andrew Luck and the Colts will not keep up. I also have the Pats as well, forty-two to twenty. Wow, yeah, it's not really a stupendous matchup. I mean, it's just if it was a different team playing the Patriots in this game, I'd would probably pick the other team. But it's just not a fantastic matchup. So there you go. Yeah. And now let's move on to our Sunday 1 o'clock games. And our first one is the Tennessee Titans and the Buffalo Wild Wing Bills. Or Buffalo Bills. I mean, <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings is a good place, I will admit. I mean, I do like it. Absolutely. But, <laughs> but uh, as for this matchup, the Buffalo Bills got shut out by the Packers 22 to zip. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> At least we didn't. At least we didn't get. At least the Dolphins didn't get shut out. I know, but we'll get to that in a second. But yeah. um, but the Tennessee Titans come off an overtime game-winning touchdown against the Eagles. That was epic. I saw that live. I was like, "Oh my God, how did that happen?" I unfortunately did not. I mean, I saw the highlights and I was like, "Wow." I mean, are you kidding me? <laughs> 
apparently not. But um, so if, as for this one, the Col- the Colts, the Titans are three and one, and the Bills just with one measly win. I definitely have the Titans in this one. I like them more because even though it's not at home, but it doesn't make any difference. I just like the Titans more in this one over the Bills. So give me the Titans for the win, twenty-eight to thirteen. This is a little bit interesting for me, um, for me to pick this one, because um, the Titans are coming off two very tough physical games, but both came away with a victory, and now must go on the road to face a team that they should beat, uh, but I don't think they will. I think Buffalo um, is going to win a very close game, probably a last-second field goal. I got the Bills, 20-17. to 17. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. It's going to be a close game. Very, very close. All right. Now we'll, go, we'll move on to this one. And, well, I figure I'd do this one. Um, the Atlanta Falcons and the Pittsburgh Steelers in Pittsburgh. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, let's, let's switch for this one. So. All right. I think this is going to be a shootout. Um, this is going to be a high-scoring game by both teams. Um both defenses have major issues, and both quarterbacks have the ability to light them up. Mm-hmm. I think we'll see that here. Um, yeah. Uh, the air will be full of touchdown passes. I think at this point in time, I'm not sure who to pick, but I'm going to go. <sighs> Sorry, Steve. i got to go with the Steelers in this one. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go Steelers win 38 to 34. They don't really have to apologize. I mean, they put up a good fight against the Ravens on Sunday night. It was a great game. Yeah, I mean, but they lost. But they lost to the Ravens. Yep. Which is the I'm, most important. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm glad they lost. But uh, um, I'll get I'll get to it in a second. But um, it was a good matchup. Roethlisberger played pretty good, and Antonio Brown was all right. And the Falcons are coming off a one point loss to the Bengals. And mm. I mean that was pretty. That was a pretty wild game. I saw that they aired it on my uh, network, and yeah, it was a pretty decent matchup. But um, but as for this one, it's in Heinz Field, and um, yeah, I have to give it to the Steelers as well. Man, the Falcons only got just one damn win. I mean, I would love the Falcons to get this one, but I have to go with my gut feeling on this one, and it's the Steelers, unfortunately. But that's right. Go- your gut, not your heart, in this one. Yeah, but it should be a pretty good matchup. But I just think it's going to go in favor to the Steelers. Um, let's go twenty-six to twenty-three by that much. So I think got de- the definite of being a close game like that. So here we go. Now we'll move on to our next one. We have the Denver Broncos and the New York Jets. Mm. Now, oh, this is going to be a little bit tough for the Broncos, I think. Yeah, well, the Broncos come off their loss on Monday night to the Chiefs, and the Jets are, I think they 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 lost to the Jaguars, 31-12. to I expected that because the Jaguars are too good of a team than, than the Jets, but this matchup is pretty much a so-so to me. I like the Broncos more, and I think think it's just going to be their victory for them. Case Keenum is doing pretty well, and their offense, their running back's pretty good, and the defense is not bad. But So give me the Broncos once again for the win, Uh, 27-13. to Yeah, they need Case Keenum to play much, much, much better at quarterback. Um, The Jets last week looked really bad against the Jaguars, Um, and – Denver should have won that game if if they didn't do that stupid shovel pass. God. Towards at the end of the at the end of the night, but um, yeah, I also have the Broncos over the Jets. Final score twenty seven to twenty three. All right. Next one is the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Kansas City Chiefs in Kansas City at Arrowhead Stadium. Um, this actually is a pretty good matchup. I really like this one because. The Jaguars are three and one. Kansas City is undefeated right now, but um, I'll let Putnam go first so I can think about this a little bit. So, well, this is gonna—I think this is gonna be the game of the week. Um, Definitely. We got the 
Patrick Mahomes against the Jaguars defense, that's going to be an absolute treat for any fan. Um, Patrick Mahomes has not thrown an interception all season, and the Jacksonville defense hasn't had an interception all season, surprisingly. Um, I think that changes here. I think uh, Kansas City is due for a loss, and I think that happens here. I think T.J. Yeldon is going to have a good day for the Jaguars running the ball. And I think the Jaguars take it. Give me the Jaguars, 24 to 17. Hmm. Well, here's my thing. I mean, yeah, Mahomes is playing pretty good and Bortles is as as well. But honestly, I'm on the opposite side. I like the Chiefs more. I think that they're going to go to 5-0. and And I think that they're going to make it pretty close in this one. But I think it's going to come down to the fourth quarter by a a game deciding field, a game winning field goal, twenty seven to twenty four. Go Chiefs, go, go Chiefs! And go there you Chiefs, go. go. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right, and now we will move on to the next one, and this is between. God, this is. Well, this is this is an all right matchup, but we'll see about it. Um, the Green Bay Packers and the Detroit Lions at Ford Field in Detroit. Um, of course, everybody remembers this matchup between Aaron Rodgers and I think it was Matthew Stafford, that game-winning Hail Mary from Aaron Rodgers. Oh, my God. That was amazing. I mean. It is caught for the win. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so everybody pretty much remembers that. But um, I think I think it's going to go in favor to the Packers. I definitely see is that, well, I don't see that kind of pass happening again, but I think it's going to be a victory for the Packers. Go Pack Go. Packers 27 and Lions 21. Okay. Um, Aaron Rodgers was not happy about the offense last week. I mean, they only – I mean, they didn't really do much on offense last week, the yeah. Packers. Yeah. Because they had to face uh, the, the Bills. They, they shut out the Bills, but they still looked pretty – pretty meh because they are the Packers after all. Um, yep. But I think that changes here. I think he will light up the Detroit Lions defense, but I think Stafford who has had success against the Packers in the past will also get his yards. This will be fun to watch, but I think Aaron Rodgers will get the best of it. I think the Packers will win. Give me the Packers 31 to 23. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. I had a belch coming up, so I knew that. Okay. <laughs> All right, next one. We have the New York Giants and the Carolina Panthers. Mm-hmm. Um, another so-so matchup, pretty much to me. But um, um, as I um look over here, um, the Saints beat the Giants thirty-three to eighteen, and the Panthers, I believe, are coming off a bye week. That's, yes, they are. I, I, I thought so. So the Panthers are looking, you know, uh, you know, they come off their bye week. The Giants not looking so so. Like I said, they only got one win. I have the Panthers in this one. I mean, again, they're coming off their bye week, and the Giants are not looking so terrific. And I think it's just going to go in favor to the Panthers. I like them more. So give me the Panthers over the Giants. 33 to 13. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Cam Newton. Um, Cam Newton. Uh, the Giants' offense sc- struggled against a very bad season, Saints defense um, in that one. So um, I think that the Panthers will also win. Uh, I think it'll be a little bit lower scoring game, um, but I think <laughs> it'll be won by. Um, Christian McCaffrey and um, his running game. I think the Panthers win it in a low-scoring game. I got the Panthers 20-13. to 13. Hmm. All right, and now we move on to the next one, and might as well do this one. So, well, since Putnam is my guest, then I sh- Yeah. The Miami Dolphins and the Cincinnati Bengals at Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati. You can go first on this one. Yeah. Um, so, like I said about the uh, Bengals, they come off a one-point victory while the Dolphins' undefeated season came to an end against the Patriots. Goddamn Patriots. But cool. 
I mean, even though I did pick the Dolphins to win, but um, I didn't expect, you know, it to be a kind of game like that. I thought it'd be a little bit closer, but apparently Tom Brady has squad just ran away with it. So, um, yeah, but yeah, the Dolphins only scored seven points. I mean, they did look pretty much so-so, but the Bengals look fantastic against the Falcons. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> it's fantastic. It's fantastic. Phenomenal. <laughs> Stand back. There's a hurricane coming through. Cause... <laughs> so, as for this matchup, uh, sorry, Putnam, I'm going to go with the Bengals in this one. I mean, I don't blame you. Well, I mean, I think it's going to be a pretty close matchup, though, but I think the Bengals are just going to pull away with this one. So, Bengals 26 and. Dolphins twenty three. I don't blame you. Um, uh, the Dolphins are playing consecutive road games, which in this league, as I've said on many pick'em shows, is very very hard to do. Yep. And of, and they're also banged up. Um, they got a lot of injuries. They've been playing like, like last week. They played like absolute crap. I got to say it. Um, the Bengals have been impressive on offense. But the defense continues to struggle. That could help Ryan Tannehill and the Dolphins <coughs> keep this one close. Um, interesting fact about this game. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to be at that game. Really? I'm actually flying tomorrow from Fort Lauderdale to Cincinnati to um, visit my family. Wow. And go going to the game on Sunday. Wow. Well, have a great time. Um, but I do also predict that the Bengals will get the win. Closer than expected, 24 to 21, Cincinnati Bengals. Hmm. Okay, and now it, we now move on to the other one, and that is, of course, this one the Baltimore Ravens against the Cleveland Browns in Cleveland. In the factory of sadness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the dog pound, some people still call it, but I mean. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll go first in this one if you yeah, want. Yeah, you might as, you might as well. <laughs> you're the Ravens fan after all. Well, um, I got a lot to say, so, but... Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> um, now, the Ravens also, like the Dolphins, are playing consecutive row games and are coming off an emotional victory against the Steelers. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this game will be close, but I like the way the Ravens play the defense and the way their defense is playing. And I think it'll make it tough for Baker, Baker Mayfield. And I think the Ravens will get the win here. Give me the Ravens 21 to 16. So here's the thing about Sunday night football. The Ravens got off to a great start. They scored, they scored um, a touchdown in the first half, and then they wound up uh, causing a fumble on one of the receivers of the Steelers, which he pretty much stripped the ball out of his hands and took it away and returned it for a touchdown. They looked it over and said that the receiver like made contact with the defender. So they looked it over and said yes, that he did make contact. Honestly, in my opinion, I looked at it and said, I don't know about that. And they kind of robbed us of that. But we still got the touchdown and made it 14 to nothing. Then the Steelers come back and tie it up 14-14 as we head to halftime. And pretty much that's when everybody started saying, okay, here we go. Now it's going to turn to one of these games. But, however, that wasn't the case. The Ravens shut out the Steelers in the second half by not allowing any points from the Steelers at all. None at all. But pretty much kept them off the board. And Flacco looked pretty looked like his old self. He looked really good. Alex Collins did pretty well. But John Brown, the wide receiver, had an amazing oh, yeah. game. And... He did so terrific, had like so many catches, and I'm like, God, this guy is great. I mean, Michael Crabtree did pretty well as well, and Willie Sneed was alright too, but the defense is great too. I mean, Suggs was doing a great job, and uh, Mosley, um, I think he played, but I'm not sure. I, th- I think he did. Um, but now Jimmy Smith, who was originally suspended from, I think, um, I think it was four games or something like that, but now... He will probably be returning to the Ravens roster. I don't know how that's going to work out. I mean, he's a pretty good player, but uh, with the squad we already have, I mean, like I said, um, 
we'll see how that shall go. But anyway, um, as for this game, um, yeah, Baker Mayfield, uh, the quarterback for the Browns, I know he's going to want to get his squad together because they only got just that one win, and the Ravens with their three and one record. Um, yeah, this should be a pretty good matchup. I mean, it's usually the matchups against Cleveland are pretty good, but there have been some games that have been disappointing to us, but it's an AFC North rivalry. I mean, just like against the Steelers and, um, yeah, I, um, I definitely am picking the Ravens in this one. Cause oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I definitely think, uh, Flacco is going to do pretty well. And another thing about Flacco, I read that people are saying or somebody wrote that he is on a pace to maybe break 5,000 passing yards. Whoa. But, I mean, I do like that prediction, but I'm I'm thinking more like maybe 4,600 he could do maybe. I don't know about 5,000. As long as he can keep his stuff together and the offensive line can protect him and all that stuff, I mean, that would be great because there's no Ravens player that has ever passed for over 5,000 yards. The only people that have come close are Joe Flacco and Vinny Testaverde. <laughs> Vinny Testaverde. Wow. Yep. Well, the, that name in a while. Well, um, to, well, to me, I, you know, I liked him. He, he played two seasons with the Ravens in 96 and 97. Then yeah. After, he was the first one, first quarterback ever. Right? Yeah. Uh huh. And after that, I think it was Tony Banks. He was so, so, and there have also been some people have had their share. I know Putnam doesn't want to hear this one. Elvis Gerback. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Elvis has left the building. He, he he clearly did after Randall Cunningham, you know. We're not talking re- about Elvis Doomerville, dumbass. Oh, but, uh, my God, that guy. Well, he <laughs> he's retired now, thank goodness. God. But, uh, yeah, so anyway, um, I have the Ravens once again over the Browns, 23-16. Uh, to 16. And also, from the game, um, the Ravens and the Steelers, there was a real nice thing that happened after the game when Terrell Suggs and Ben Roethlisberger exchanged jerseys. Like, Terrell Suggs gave uh, Roethlisberger his jersey, and Roethlisberger gave his to Suggs. And he wrote on the back of his jersey to Suggs, he said, Sizzle, always great to play you. You are a, you are a future, no doubt, first ballot Hall of Famer. And I'm like, Whoa. and I'm like, thank you, Ben. I mean, that was really awesome of you to say that. I mean, a lot of class right there. Still hate your guts, but that was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, moving on now to our four o'clock games, our West Coast games. Well, three of them are West Coast games. The other ones is another one, but we'll get in that in a second. The first one is a battle of two California teams: the Oakland Raiders and the L.A. Chargers. Oh man. <laughs> um. Just to think, just to think, Steve, in a couple couple of years, it'll be Las Vegas against Los Angeles. That, oh, my God. That is awful. I mean, I, <laughs> that is really awful. I mean, the names just stay in Oakland. That's that's my opinion. But Yeah, but I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. But as for this matchup, um, the Raiders finally got their first win, barely, over the Browns. Like, God. What was it? Uh, like forty something. Forty five to forty two. Yeah, it was there it is, and yeah, I thought for sure the Raiders were gonna like win this easily, but instead, it needed it needed to win it in overtime. So yeah, and the Chargers come off a two point victory over the Forty ers So for this matchup, this this seems pretty decent, but but ow echo God uh <sighs> like I was saying so. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the Chargers in this one. I like them more in this one, and I think it's gonna be a pretty good matchup. I like this matchup, Derek Carr and um, Philip Rivers. So I think it's gonna be a pretty good matchup once again. Give me the Chargers over the Raiders, twenty-seven to twenty-three. I agree. I also have the Chargers. Um, the Raiders' um, defense still remains a problem. That is good news for Philip Rivers. Uh, the Chargers' defense has not been good either, so expect a lot of points. I think the Chargers will win in a high-scoring game, but I think it's going to be close, 34-27. to 27. Chargers. Okay. Next one, we have the Arizona Cardinals and the San Francisco 49ers at mm. Levi's Stadium. And um, I'll let Putnam go first. 
change. Well, Josh Rosen, the I believe he was the 10th overall pick in the draft, is making his first start on the road for the Cardinals in this one. He was solid last week in his first start against the Seahawks, but playing on the road is a challenge. Uh, the 49ers did some good things against the Chargers last week, and I think, that, I think that carries over here. And I think the 49ers win this game behind C.J. Pethard. So give me the 49ers, 23-17. Yeah, um, like I like I said, pretty well. Well, like you said, um, yeah, um, that guy, um, Josh Rosen, um, he's looking for his first win to give his team the victory. While the Forty Niners has got one measly win after losing their quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo, so pretty much, yeah, I I have to agree with the Forty Niners as well. Man, it's I think it's gonna be a pretty close matchup though. I'm gonna say Forty Niners twenty six and Cardinals twenty three. Oh wow! Game just des- game deciding one, not overtime, but just going to be a pretty close one. Next one, this should be a um pretty um pretty decent matchup, and this is between the Minnesota Vikings and the Philadelphia Eagles in Philadelphia. And special, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um, yeah. So the Eagles are coming off that um. Overtime loss to the Titans, while the Minnesota Vikings come off their loss on Thursday night football against the Rams. And this, like I said, seems like a pretty decent matchup, but um, I like the Eagles in this one. I think they're going to rebound from that overtime loss against the Titans, and I think that they're going to pull away with the victory against the Vikings. 27-24. to 24. Okay, um... This is a rematch of last January's NFC Championship game, which was won in a blowout by the Eagles. Features It features two teams that haven't looked good this season. Um, Eagles lost last week against the Titans, while the Vikings are coming off a blowout loss to the Rams, like you said already. Uh, the Vikings don't look right on defense, and that will show up here. I think the Eagles take it 27-20. to Next one we have is the other West Coast game, and that is between the Seattle Seahawks and the Los Angeles Rams. The Rams still undefeated with a 4-0 record, and the Seattle Seahawks with a 2-2 record. Um, yeah. Between this this game, uh, this is my thing. I like the Rams more. I think that they're going to... Continue their undefeated streak because the Seahawks are looking pretty mess so far, and I think the Rams are just gonna get the victory pretty much. And there you go. Um, give me the <laughs> give me the Rams thirty three to seventeen. I agree one hundred percent. The Rams are flying high on offense and will be very well rested after playing last Thursday. Uh, Seahawks are coming off a solid defensive game last week against Arizona. But this is a much tougher challenge for the Seahawks. Um, Seattle plays much better at home, and I think that will help to keep this one closer than expected. But at the end of the day, i got to go with the undefeated Rams, and it'll it'll be a tight game. i got the Rams 27-24. All right, and now that brings us to this one, and that is our Sunday night football matchup. And... You check the local listings. <laughs> yep. Been with your hosts, of course, Al Michaels and Chris Collinsworth. And oh, here's a guy. <laughs> they don't move their arm any faster. You see him driving off with that back leg? That was a pretty pass. <laughs> God, everybody was going crazy on Facebook with the Ravens and Steelers game talking about Chris Collinsworth. And a lot of my friends were like, oh, Chris Collinsworth, shut the F up. <laughs> Yeah, uh, honestly, I mean, I mean, he's all right, but I don't really pay much attention to him. I like Al Michaels. You know, he's a great commentator. But some people I know liked it when John Madden was in the booth. I think, but um, if I had to choose like a different person, like a former football player to do commentary for Sunday Night Football, believe me or not, Ray Lewis. Oh, I mean, I like his commentary, but if I had, if, but if it had to be like. If I had to choose beside a beside a Raven, like somebody that like somebody different, um, 
I don't know. I mean, Brian Erlacher from the Bears, I mean, I think he'd be pretty good. But So, anyway, um, as for this matchup, we have the Dallas Cowboys taking on the Houston Texans. In, oh, Texas. Yep, at uh, NRG Stadium. And uh, Cowboys uh, with a 2-2 two and two record and the Texans with a 1-3 and three record. Um, I... Um, I like the the Cowboys in this one, honestly. Um, they um, they pretty much um, where the heck is that? They came they come off a two point victory over the Lions, and the Texans come off an overtime win against the Colts. So, um, yeah, I like the Cowboys more in this one. Prescott is doing pretty well, and um, well, pretty pretty much um, okay. And the te- Texans, I don't really keep keep up with them that much but pretty much i'm just going with my gut on this one and i'm going with the cowboys 27 to 16 i'm on the opposite side of the spectrum and i'll explain Hmm. why um (coughs) got back to their strength on offense last week which is running the ball (laughs) (laughs) that will they will need to do this here but the texans are fourth in rushing yards per attempt against that um that will make for that will make it tough for the offense in dallas uh the texans have line issues up front on offense which could make it tough for deshaun watson but i think the texans will find a way to win um it's somewhat of a low scoring game uh 20 to 14 in overtime wow All right, and now that will bring us to the um, last one, and that is Monday Night Football between the Washington Redskins and the New Orleans Saints in the Superdome. The <laughs> yes, this this actually should be a pretty good matchup, but um, I'll let Putnam go first on this one. So, okay, so Drew Brees, if he if he um if he wins this game, I think he can set the all time record for passing yards in a career in this one if he um, does really well. Um, that brings a little extra to this game, but it's also a big game. Uh, Washington is coming off of a bye, while the Saints are at home after a two road loss. After two road losses, um, the Redskins have played solid defense this season, and they will do it here to keep it close. Uh, but, however, I think the Saints, the Houdat Nation, will get the win in the Super Bowl. <laughs> so give me the Saints twenty three to twenty over the Redskins. <clears throat> yeah, like I said, I think this is gonna be a pretty good matchup because one team that's two and one and the other is three and one, and I definitely just like this matchup and I think it's gonna be a pretty good one. And I have the Saints as well. I like um, them in this game as Drew Brees is playing great and. Uh, Alex Smith for the Redskins is playing pretty well too. So, um, but I think it's going to be pretty close. So, so give me the Saints once again, thirty-three to thirty. Oh yeah. Yep. And there you go. And that's it. So that's all the games that we have uh, covered for week number five. And um, so yeah, that's about it. Um, so if anybody else like has a comment as well, like um, if you want to like, say your predictions as well, feel free to comment in the comment box and say what you want. And uh, so um, I'd like to thank Mr. Apezel90, Alex Putnam, for joining as always. Thank you so much as always for having me, Steve. Always love doing these things with you, man. And um, yeah. <coughs> excuse me, yeah, enjoy <laughs> football. Yes, definitely, and. Uh, Enjoy, uh, enjoy Cincinnati with that um, game. Uh, hopefully, the Bengals can win it, even though we're or the Dolphins can win, it, even though we're picking the Bengals. But still, um, hope it's a good time. But uh, so, 
Yep, yep. and I hope Michael Crabtree and Alex Collins give me points on my fantasy team. Sweet. All right, so, all right, so that's going to do it. So, so um, as always, if you like this video, please hit the like button, comment. If you have something to say, no negative stuff, subscribe. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing, and you all take care, and thanks again for watching this game of our Week 5 NFL picks, and thank you for watching. Take care.